morning. We want to welcome all of you to service here um, through Zoom at First Presbyterian Church. We're grateful for your presence. We're holding space in this sanctuary the way you all are holding space in your own heart and mind for the great mystery that Easter is for us. Um, we want to invite you uh, this morning to uh, those of you that were with us on Good Friday, we uh, extinguished some candles, and this morning there's the opportunity to relight those candles in celebration of the Easter morn and light. A couple of announcements. If you're working with one of the bulletins that is on our website, just know that the hymns are in a different order on that uh, bulletin. Uh, just kind of go with the flow of the PowerPoint or of the directions that we'll give um, on the audio for you so that you can just move through those discrepancies. We also want to invite you, if you are able, to type your presence into the chat menu. Um, and that's just a way of us uh, knowing that you're with us and uh, being able to take attendance and uh, meet needs and stay in contact with you. Finally, we want to note that the family of Mary Jane Martinelli called the church yesterday to say that Mary Jane is now in hospice care and um, has uh, very good care surrounding her, but we want to be remembering all those who are dealing with hospitalizations, nursing home stays, and things that otherwise uh, distance us uh, during important times. So with that, I know that we have chimes this morning from the Goodman household, and we have the font uh, from the Steubenrock household. So to the Goodmans. Good morning, First Pros. Good morning. Thank you, Goodmans, for the chimes, and now to the Steubenrock household. Good morning. Welcome home, children of God. We want to thank you, households, for getting us started. Uh, you have, by our young people and children, been called to worship. So join me in this opening call to worship for Easter morning. Christ is risen. What does it mean? Christ is risen indeed. God's presence envelops and strengthens our lives. Christ is risen. What does it mean? Christ is risen indeed. God's resurrecting energy is still at work in our lives and world. Within tombs of despair and within moments of death, hope is not contained. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hope springs outward from the tomb and calls us forward in our living. Jesus Christ. 
a lot of gratitude to our trumpeter, uh, Charlie Stern, who's been with us for the 8.30 and 10.30 service, grateful for what he's doing while he's sheltering in place. Join me in an Easter prayer of praise. Lord of the dance, we give you thanks for the rhythms that bring us to Easter Day. On this day, we honor your resurrecting power present each day of our lives. For the wonder of nature in green grass, budding trees, and bold blooms, our hearts are full. For the miracle of new species, scientific discovery, and the depth of human experience, the synapses of our brains fire with gratitude. Let the timelessness of Christ's story, that courage, self-giving love, and hope, allow us the experience of eternal life and inspire our souls to take a morning stretch. Our spirits are refreshed to lead us forward. This spirit, this day of rebirth reminds us to consider denials, crosses, and tombs as temporary places, not dwelling places. You have gone on ahead of us to call us forward, and we are your glad and grateful people. In and through Christ, amen. This morning, we will pass the peace. You may certainly type peace of Christ or Christ is risen or another greeting in the chat box. You may also uh, join the cacophony of sounds as we unmute everyone and we extend peace, grace, and hope to one another. Let's do that now. they unmuted up now. I appreciate your efforts. This is Jim Dalton. We got uh, all the. Hey, Jim Dalton, peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Jim. Peace of Christ be with you. Okay. The last day, the last day, the last day we did it, I did like the majority of them. Yeah. Spirit box from the Ferreter family, and we're grateful that they were willing to do this work on Easter Sunday. Uh, so, uh, queuing Dee Dee and the Ferreters, and we'll share in this box. Luke, you're not unmuted yet. I'm trying. Can you unmute on your end? There you go. Yes, I think I'm unmuted now. Am I good? Yep. You're great. All right, kids, take it away. Sam, you go first, buddy. You go for Sam. 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 That's a stuffed bird of some kind. Oh, a what? parrot. Tell Dee Dee what it is. <laughs> parrot. <laughs> okay. Parrot. Hey, Maggie, you go next, baby. Well, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have, Maggie? He has a squid, so we've got one parrot, one squid, and what have you got, Lucy? A bunny. Lucy has a bunny. A bunny. All right. I love it. They're all really, really soft. Dee Dee, I'm thinking about that parrot. Parrots are really good at um, just saying what's been said to them. Sam's parrot is really bright and beautiful, and uh, one of the first things we learn is how to talk according to what others teach us to say. You're kind of doing that in your household. Very true. 
You know what I'm, I think about with, uh, with the two of those birds is I had a seminary professor that would talk about the way a good sermon just sort of soars, like it takes off and soars. And what, it, but you know, I'm not really thinking about sermons quite right now. I'm thinking more about the way our Easter joy this morning, in spite of being apart, does sort of have this soaring energy where it's lifting all of us off the ground a little bit and holding us up a little bit higher than we are on our ordinary days uh, when we're apart from each other. So I'm thinking about what the way your birds might soar and the way we all might be soaring right now. Wonderful. That bunny is also just classic Easter, right? Um, sort of signs of fertility, but certainly energetic as uh, bunnies. And I just have to say to all the kids and young people, we are so missing your energy in the sanctuary. And we are grateful for the ways that you are hmm, um, taking your energy outdoors sometimes and helping your folks. Um, but really, uh, energy is, Dee Dee's right, what this day is all about, feeling that renewed energy and this uh, storehouse of energy that God gives us to continue to do our kindness and to share our gifts with one another. Great spirit box, ferreters. Thank you, ferreters. I was, uh, you know, just for the record, uh, we eventually we need one of Sam's videos uh, to be in the spirit box, Luke Ferreter. Well, we didn't say our prayer. Do we want to say our prayer with the kids before we go? Yeah, let's do it. God be in my head. God be on my left. God be on my right. God be beneath me. God be above me. God be in the faces of all who love me. Um, join me in prayer as we um, get ready to turn to our scripture readings. Let's pray. God of grace, we gather this day and we celebrate again the promises of your word. We give thanks for the joy of Easter and we marvel at the empty tomb. On this day, just as it is every other day, we ask that your word would inspire us, that it would fill us with hope, and that it would continue to call us forward into your service. In and through Christ we pray. Amen. Our Hebrew scripture reading comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 17. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flows around the whole valley of Havilah where there is gold and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Syria, of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel reading, which comes from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the 11 and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. So our sermon series on this Easter morning concludes. We've been thinking about choreography and cruciform. For those of you that can see a video screen, you notice that there's a human anatomical figure um, sort of divided into the different planes that make up the human body toward balance and wholeness. And there is also the Cairo symbol. We've playfully been imagining how similar these two images look, the, um, the anatomy of the human body and the symbol of the Rokai, Cairo. And so this morning we'll be concluding the series that looks at choreography and cruciform and the metaphor of dance as something that is meaningful for our faith. The old rugged cross, that beloved image, that empty cross, that beloved image of hope, a structure though of tension and rigidity. The crossbars of the old rugged cross are nailed down, locked in place, meant and intended by Roman hierarchy to drain all that was fluid and life-giving. This morning, putting my own adoration for the old rugged cross in a safe place, I want to refer to the cross another way, something like the old rigid cross. This slight renaming takes seriously the intent of this structure to scapegoat, crucify, and wash our hands of the complex things that come and make serious change in our world. This morning, there are many people talking about empty tombs in empty sanctuaries. But I would rather talk to you this morning on this Easter Sunday about the very deep infrastructure of our body and the infrastructure of our faith. The, inf the infrastructure that I speak of is a cruciform infrastructure the cruciform image sobers our examination of life, and the cruciform image also gives us the strength and power to respond. And this morning, I'll be defending that premise. The infrastructure of the cruciform gives you and I, indeed, the power to dance. It was da Vinci that first attempted to sort of capture the geometric ideal of the human body. But today's examination of the body can go even deeper. And so when doctors and therapists talk about the ideal balanced human condition, they use a very specific word that they have borrowed from the industry of architecture. This specific word is tensegrity. Tense-egrity. Tensegrity. The term is coined by Buckminster Fuller, who was an architect. And there are many, many diagrams on the internet of tensegrity. Fundamentally, tensegrity is the compression and tension 
that hold your body and my body together. Our bones are sort of floating spacers. They float and they push the soft tissue and the tone, they push the soft tissue and give it form. The tone comes from the, our myofascial sheath, that fascial sheath that runs around our bones and ligaments. And while all of us have different ranges of motion, while all of us have different capacities within our bodies, fundamentally each and every living body is full of tensegrity, that is tension and compression. The building around me, the empty building, is an example of a structure that is called continuous tension structure. That is brick on brick. The tension is always the same. The tension uh, is born in the architecture of the building, anticipated and born. The stability of tensegrity, on the other hand, is less stiff and in many ways more resilient than the continuous compression structure. So for example, when I hold this cross that my Uncle Phil made me, it's very heavy, and if I hold it in my left hand, it's not just my left hand that bears the weight. My hips, my back, my neck, my right leg, my right arm, they all compensate to help bear the load of this cross. The tensegrity of my body means that force is always being adjusted throughout. It can never be perfectly anticipated, but it can be responded to. Now deep within the fascia of our body, there is an abiding cruciform architecture. Sometimes that fascia looks like the mast of a ship. Sometimes those fascial threads look like the truss over a house. But always within them is some suggestion of the cruciform image, this cross. If you Google this on the web, you'll see it. This web of strength anchors our stability as human beings. As I said earlier, tensegrity allows you and I to dance. It allows us to reach and stretch, and so this morning I'd like to demonstrate at least three moves that are possible because of the tensegrity, that is the compression and the tension within our bodies. What I'll invite you to imagine is that this fundamental structure of our body is what our spirit longs for, this tension and compression. One of the first dance moves of tensegrity is literally sort of the shape of the cross in our body. This opening up of ourselves, this fundamental posture to the world, this changing, shifting world. As people of faith, we are most congruent when we are open to change. That doesn't mean that change is easy, but it does mean that we are willing to welcome and host it. That spirit of hospitality that God calls all people to is fundamental as you and I begin to dance, and it's fundamental to tension and compression within the body as well. The outstretched arms prepare to hold. <laughs> the outstretched arms mean the feet are more soundly grounded to the earth. To shrink, to shrivel, to draw away is not a posture of strength, but it is a posture to which we are often tempted. So the first dance move of tensegrity is to be open. To be open with a confidence that understands that come what may, we can make the journey in the face of our mortality, in the face of uncertainty. The session and I want to thank you all for the ways that you have been powerfully open during a time of change. I mean, here you are calling in 
Here you are, zooming on. This openness really honors that creative imagery out of Genesis. I wanted to include the presence of the four rivers in this uh, cosmology of Genesis because it really impresses upon us that you and I are embedded in a world that flows. And we too, as human beings, are fluid creatures. So the openness. But every radical openness comes with boundaries. And these days, the boundaries are at least six feet. It is so overwhelming to think about honoring God and honoring neighbor when we imagine that we have to do everything or that there is no end to what we can do. But to be a person that's fundamentally open and then boundaried means that we can take the opportunities to do what is within our reach and capacity. And that is enough. We have heard the stories. We know you all are doing diligent work to do what you can in the world, given the limitations and given the boundaries. We know you are leading with your head and your heart as you make tough choices. So your session and your diaconate, they're leaning into this too. And they're saying, given our openness and given our boundaries, given the, the limits of our reach, what can we do? So your personnel committee decided to pay all part-time employees, whether they are, because they cannot work as they usually do, paying all part-time employees their full salary through April. Your finance committee met this last week and they believe that we are in a strong enough position that we can pay them through August if we need to. Your Christian education committee, when faced with contracts for services, like our Palm Sunday Easter egg hunt, how many years has Double R Burger arrived to feed us hamburgers, chips, potato salad? Your Christian Education Committee said, it's within our reach. It is possible for us to say to Double R Burgers, we're not going to break the contract. We want you to provide the meals. And just a week and a half ago, they delivered Double R Burgers to my brother's keeper. And there within the reach, the employer is valued, the people are valued, the ministry continues. This morning at 8.30, our associate pastor, Dee Dee Carson, Sarah Lieber from the Outreach Committee, and Jordan Carson traveled to um, Oak Lodge across the street, and in CDC compliance, they delivered Rufi's Casina tacos to the people at Oak Lodge. And what Dee Dee will tell you is that when she went to pass out flyers this week, those individuals said, thank you so much for remembering us at Easter. Employer, people, capacity. Can we do it all? Certainly not. But what's within our reach? The tensegrity of the human being wants to stretch itself. And through the stretch, through the stretch and the compression, we can feel this mysterious resurrecting energy of God that makes all things new, old things, tired things, crucified things. So within the openness and the stretch, then we draw in and we hold up. This too is tension and compression. We begin to work over the experiences of our life and draw them into a meaning. You and I serve not just because it is a call and a command from the Creator to serve. We call and cons we, we serve because it is fundamental to the creative process as human beings. And there is nothing like the work of a human being who says, this is the raw material of my life. What does it mean? And they take the time to give it shape to tell its story. This is an act of self-giving love, really, when we become not only consumers of life, but interpreters of life, contributors to the story. 
And so, in the crisscross of our fascia, our body is able to crisscross. We are able to cross the street. We are able to, can you see the Travolta move? If you're on the phone, you can't see it, but imagine John Travolta. In the crisscross, you and I are the, given the privilege of staying alive, staying alive, staying alive in all the right ways. May God bless the deeply embedded cruciform and the cruciform that hangs on our wall and the cruciform that calls us out and beyond to tension and compression that releases our spirit. Happy Easter, crisscross, y'all. Amen. We're going to affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Dee Dee, are you ready for that? You all join me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So this slide holds a place for our morning offering. And even though we're not in the room together, so a plate can't come by, we do want to hold space for our offering. We're collecting a special offering today for Easter with the hope of offering, offering short-term rental assistance for those who are affected by this crisis. And our goal, uh, the outreach committee's goal is to raise $3,000 that we could then use to partner with the nonprofits in town that we work with to hopefully help six different families through this crisis. So if this is something you're interested in, you can use the website or Realm to make a contribution, or you can go the old fashioned way and mail a check to the church with Easter offering in the memo line. option on it. Dee Dee, that uh, doxology slide will also have a texting op option on it. forget is Randy Umstead singing in the sanctuary with his mask on on the screen so thanks Randy for being a good good follower of the rules um, if you all will join me in our closing prayer gracious God on this Easter day we give thanks that Christ is risen that no matter the chaos and turmoil and fear in our world still he is risen and the joy of Easter morning is real even if we cannot gather as we would like and just like we can't stop Easter from coming, we cannot stop God's presence from showing up amidst the pandemic. We can see the grace of God as people get creative to care for one another, as sewers are wearing themselves out to make masks for neighbors and strangers, as doctors and nurses and therapists bravely make their way to the front lines, as people share what commodities they have with friends who are running low. You, O oh God, are still everywhere, holding up those who need us, need it, and reminding us that love of neighbor still matters. We pray, O oh God, this day for those that we long to visit. We would love to be able to go see Pat Patillo and Doug Waddill and Mary Jane Martinelli. 
We can't wait to welcome Avery and John Curley's new baby in a few weeks and Devin Stahl and Chris Wright's a few weeks after that. We celebrate with the Height Millers the arrival of a new granddaughter that they cannot yet go hold. In the absence of being able to go and visit, instead, oh God, we pray. We pray for well being and strength and growth, and we delight that new life still springs up always and everywhere. We pray for healing and hope for those who are struggling. We pray for all who are lonely. May they know that you are still here and that God is still with them. Fill us, O oh God, with Easter joy that lasts beyond today. We carry many prayers in our hearts, these and many beyond them, and we lift them up to you, O oh God, as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dona nobis pacem pacem. If you'll lead us in our charge, I'll do the benediction and then just a couple of verbal announcements from me. Friends, go out into the world and into the rest of your homes in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we do this, it's all possible because we are enveloped by our creator, redeemer, sustainer, and friend. Amen. We want to welcome Dottie Fornoff to a successful arrival to the Zoom worship service. I also want to give a shout out to the technical expertise of Catherine Delk. Dee Dee and I have got a lot of airtime, but Catherine is really perfecting the support of the PowerPoint. Um, she doesn't want to be called on to do that for anybody else, but she's done a terrific job for us, and we need to give her a shout out. Um, finally, uh, during these days of social distancing, we are going to be saying goodbye to our beloved associate, Dee Dee. We're doing this as carefully as we can, and you'll note that next Sunday, we're going to bless the transition of her call from First Waco to First Virginia Beach. And on May 3rd, we are going to have a parade goodbye party down Austin Avenue. And so please be anticipating more details about that. Um, we appreciate the way that we'll keep you safe, but want you to be able to lay eyes on her and for her to lay eyes on you. With that, we want to wish everyone a very happy Easter. Thank you for uh, being with us and fully present. Stay in chat as long as you might like to.